last Friday, 500 members of the greater Metro West community sat in the new Remembrance Hall for the fallen soldiers of Israel on Mount Herzl. The Remembrance Hall was designed to provide visitors with both a personal and collective commemoration experience and serve as an expression of Israel's heartfelt promise. We shall remember all of them. The walls of the hall wrap around a tall torch-like structure covered by the names of the fallen, bringing together their personal stories and tying them to the history of the state of Israel. Every morning, a memorial service is held in order to honor those who fell on that specific date. Their individual stones engraved with their names and the date of passing are illuminated with the walls of the hall. At the center of the hall rests the eternal flame, a structure symbolizing our collective duty of commemoration. As we sat in the memorial hall, IDF soldiers laid a wreath to remember those who died. We sang songs of remembrance, stood for Hatikva, and had a moment of silence to remember those who have protected the state of Israel. As we exited the memorial, we started walking in through the sacred grounds of Har Herzl. And at that same time, Israelis were gathering at Har Herzl to bury an Israeli soldier, Shiloh Yosef Amir, who a day earlier was killed near the West Bank settlement of Kedumim by a Palestinian terrorist. Hundreds of Israelis gathered at his grave, many who did not know Amir, but still showed up to honor his life. Amir's father, David, said, you were always the first to help and the last to leave. You were loved by family and friends. Your presence filled all your surroundings with joy. You were the first to combat the terrorists, and you took the fire. Our visit to Har Herzl reminded us of those lives lost when establishing the state of Israel and those who continue to risk their lives defending the state. Earlier last week, our group of 40 Temple Emmanuel congregants had a special briefing with a retired Brigadier General in Gaharj, a new village on the Lebanon border in the Golan Heights. As we listened to him speak, he pointed to Lebanon and then to Syria, and he said, as you look out at those borders, that's not Lebanon, that's not Syria, but that's Iran. The very next day, as we were traveling down south, rockets were launched towards that town. Luckily, there was no damage and no injuries. But a reminder to all of us, of the geopolitical threats that Israel faces. And as Shabbat ended last week, I wandered through the streets of Jerusalem after a beautiful Havdalah at David's Tower. I wandered to the Prime Minister House where thousands of Israelis were holding signs, Israeli flags singing and shouting, Democratia, democracy, and Busha, shame, in protest to the planned judicial reforms that many Israelis feel will make Israel less democratic and more of a dictatorship. These protests have been going on for over six months as the current government moves to pass laws that will limit the power of the judicial system in Israel and change some of the checks and balances currently in place. At the end of the rally, every protester saying Hatikva, waving their Israeli flags. 
The protesters are a reminder to us of the challenges facing Israel's democracy and the rights of minorities and the most vulnerable in Israel's society. Sometimes living outside of Israel, it's hard for to us to understand what is happening on the ground, what the average Israeli is facing day to day. We read articles and editorials, we watch TV clips, and are inundated with social media responses. And we feel mixed emotions, and our distance sometimes makes it harder to connect. Last week, for those who traveled on Federation's centennial mission, we now have a greater understanding of what Israelis face on a day-to-day basis, day-to-day basis, which was a critical experience for those living outside of Israel. And in this week's Torah portion, Matot, we read about the first voluntary Jews living outside of Israel. The Israelites are on the cusp of entering the Promised Land. When two tribes, the Reubenites and the Gadites, confront Moses and say that they do not want to move across the Jordan as the land where they are now is suitable for the numerous amounts of cattle. Moses is infuriated by their request and yells to them, your brothers go to war and you stay here. However, the Reubenites and the Gadites hold their ground and are able to appease Moses. They promise Moses that though they will not live in the promised land, they still will fight with the, ch- with the children of Israel and they will not go back to their homes until all the Israelites possess their portion of the land. Moses accepts the promise and warns against breaking it. And there we have it, the first diaspora community supporting the land of Israel, a promise that was kept and that we will continue to keep. Yet when we feel far away from Israel, when we don't always understand the inner workings, and when we may not always agree with every political or military move of the Israeli leadership, how do we make sure to keep that promise? The first way is to remain connected. I know that all of our fellow Tempo Emanuel congregants who traveled on this mission have a greater understanding of Israel have a greater connection to the land and the people, and recognize more the internal and external threats that Israel is facing. And my hope is that that connection does not end now that we are home, but instead sparks more interest in keeping up to date with the news stories, in better touch with the Israelis we met on the ground, and a greater ability to navigate some of the complexities we hear on a daily basis. For a community outside of Israel to honor that promise of supporting the lands, we need to seek out the knowledge as well as nurture relationships. I know our bus hopes to do that in the coming year with our sister city of Arad, with more conversations with Israelis from the grounds and greater learning opportunities for our entire congregation. And another way to keep that promise of supporting Israel is speaking out. While we don't live in Israel, I strongly believe that we American Jews still have a voice with what is happening there. We may not have a vote, But as Jews, Israel is our homeland, and we must share our concerns, support Israel when it's under attack, and make sure that our progressive Jewish ideals are being heard too. I believe in a strong Jewish and democratic country, and we have the right to share our beliefs even if we don't live there.
Last Shabbat, 500 of us sat on the southern wall steps leading to the Temple Mounts. We were dressed in all white. It was a powerful, a beautiful, and moving experience to sing Kabbalat Shabbat songs together, to, believe, to breathe in that J Jerusalem Shabbat air, and to mark Shabbat in that spiritual space. Yet what was also moving for me about that moment was the strong community from greater Metro West, the leaders of the state of Israel, who have committed themselves to being in relationship with the Holy Land. My hope is that relationship continues to grow as we carry out that promise that we read in this week's Torah portion.